Hi, everybody. I'm Danielle Woolley, otherwise known as Stray. And I'm Elizabeth Gerhardt, otherwise known as Calico. Welcome to our podcast, the Jersey Podcast. Oh, so we'd Jersey like podcast. to, yeah. So we'd like to start off today, Elizabeth. I'd love to get an update on how's little Max doing. Oh, yeah. So if you haven't watched the other episodes, I adopted Max as a tiny little kitten. He came up from Kentucky to New Jersey and he had been on the farm as a stray. And so, of course, he'd had a rough beginning and I had him for a while. And then he started scratching the skin around his eyes. And so we actually I've taken him to a few different vets. I, I'm going to go to vet number four now. So I took him to my main vet who sent me to an allergist who Really, we were working together and he was getting worse and worse. So I went to a holistic vet. And the last time I went to the holistic vet, the guy was like, well, he's a weird cat. He's got extra toes. He's got kind of a strange body shape. Maybe he's, you know, there's nothing. Maybe it's just him. And so the, <laughs> so I went back to my original wow. vet. Yeah, he had been on ivermectin and his he got really bad. He couldn't even open his eyes. So I went back to my original vet who put him on a number of different things. So put him on gabapentin to calm him down. And that also helps the skin, put him on a steroid, which helps with the itching, put him on an antibiotic in case this was getting infected. And then we also had to put medication in his ears. Oh gosh. I know. And so he's been on that. Luckily my daughter was home helping me administer that to him. But then I, we noticed that he seemed to have tapeworm again and I had treated him for tapeworm, but I hadn't treated my other two cats big no-no in a multi-cat household, right? So lesson learned there, I'm sure. Yes. Took him back to the vet yesterday, got tapeworm medication for all of our cats. And it was these big pills that they just would not take. So my daughter had this idea, kind of worked, but worked better than most things. She said, why don't we smoosh them up in the mortar and pestle and then stick them in butter and then stick the butter in their mouth. And there's not much they can do to get the butter out of their mouth. Oh, wow. So we did that, but they were big pills. So it kind of worked. It was a lot of butter, right? So, um, but we got most of it down them, I think. Um, And Max's is a liquid and he's really, he's like resigned to having to take all this medication at this point, but he knows he feels better if he does. He looks, we upped the steroid a little bit. He looks better this morning. I gave him, I have three doses of anti-worm medicine for him. So, or deworming medicine. So I gave him the first dose his, and then I have to give him some today and some tomorrow, but he looks a lot better today. So well, that's um, good. I mean, that's a very, I don't want to say troubling. Like that's a lot that that poor little kitty cat's going through. I'm glad you're trying some new stuff and working with the new vet. And we also wanted to say thank you because after the first episode aired, um, we have been receiving text messages and voicemails and messages from people with suggestions. So we think that's really cool of you guys. So um, somebody right. actually wrote in with a couple of food recommendations that they had a cat mm-hmm. that just would not stop scratching their face. Um, I'm actually replied to them asking how long before they notice a difference. So um, we'll kind of wait to hear back on that. But if you guys have a cat that's just scratching, like to, to explain it, like around both eyes, nowhere else, just around their eyes. Well, no, now he it's moved down. See, I keep thinking oh. it's something coming coming from his ears, but I don't know. So I do have him on special food. Although today he managed to get into the pantry and rip open a bag of food that he's not, that has chicken that he's supposedly allergic, but I do want to warn people about this too, because the holistic vet did $1,600 worth of allergy testing, blood testing on him and came back with all these results. And I asked them like, how reliable is this information? And they never told me. So then I went to my regular vet, my initial vet, and asked him. And he said, well, he looked up the lab and they're kind of hit and miss. So we don't really know how accurate this data really is about your cat and what he can eat and what he's allergic to. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me right now. If anybody has feedback on that too, then we would love to hear from you. So I'm taking him to a new special dermatologist allergist. One of the uh, challenges is that most of the research and medicines developed are for dogs because people take their dogs to the vet more readily than they take their cats. Gee, I wonder why. <laughs> so hard Probably a lot cat. easier. <laughs> yeah, it's so hard to get the cat. In. Although Max is so good about it. He was purring in his carrier. So he is the greatest little kitten. I just love him so much. So we are going to find a solution to this. Anybody, thank you. Somebody did say a steroid and a special diet, which is kind of where it looks like we're going. Um, I'm going to take him, but they're going to do a culture of his face. 
I still feel like it could be some sort of bugs. I put these sticky things up around the bugs in my, or around the plants in my sunroom to see if there's bugs there. So uh, okay. I'll, I'll keep, keep going. us posted. Yeah. Keep us yeah. posted. As you can see, we could probably talk a whole hour about Max, but we won't do that to you guys because we have a really cool guest today. Um, I'd like to introduce everybody to Tirza. Um, she's going to pop up in just a moment and she has a really cool background. It's a special blanket with cats on it that she'll tell you guys about. Um, but we met through a woman's organization and I thought it was really cool that she not only does artistic work, um, but she's techie as well and was talking about NFTs and she has a group called the Coffee Cat Chat. I think I got that right. So of course I was attracted to her because I love all of those things. I love coffee. And I love cats and I love talking. So <laughs> I actually bought my first NFT through her, which is really cute. And uh, cheers to say hi to everybody and, and welcome to these, uh, episode five of the Jersey podcast. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you, Danielle and Elizabeth for inviting me on your show. I'm delighted to be here. Um, yes, as, as, as Danielle said, I'm Tirza Ekholm. And I do have, I have a private Facebook group called Coffee Cat Chat, where I do present a lot of my uh, coffee cat art, <laughs> mainly in the form of NFTs, which I'm very enamored with. Um, and also to discuss things like NFTs and the future of technology and where we're going uh, with all of that. And I help use the cat, coffee cats to kind of help illustrate what I'm doing. Um, but just because um, I was super inspired by my mom, um, is a quilter. She makes beautiful, gorgeous quilts. And mm. so when I lost, when we lost our last cat, she made this huge, beautiful quilt showing cats in all kinds of different positions. You know, you can't quite see it, but it kind of go, it's, it's, it's a large, <laughs> it's wow. beautiful. You That's have big. to go to our YouTube channel and take a look at this thing. It's beautiful. So it makes me happy just looking at it. Yes, exactly. And it makes me happy to see it too. There's cats in all kinds of different positions. And um, I don't currently have any cats. We haven't had any pets for, for a few years now. Um, there's some members of my family um, here locally <clears throat> who are allergic to cats and we like to have them come visit every once in a while. So I'm, I'm still dithering about how that might work at some point. Um, so instead, what I do is I, I go visit cats, like at a cat cafe in Denver, and I make lots of art with cats in them. <laughs> yeah. And that's really why we, we invited her to be on because, um, you don't have to have a cat to be a cat lover. Like she loves cats. She shows it through her art. And even when you went to that cat cafe, I was following along. Cause we have a cat cafe down by us too. I haven't been to it yet. Um, but I've been meaning to, and, um, you know, she shared it. So you don't have to have cats to love them. She shared about the cats that were available for adoption and, you know, helped spread the word about that place that existed and, uh, you know, a lot of cool stuff that she's doing. So as far as NFT goes, I'm going to make a joke now because yes, I bought one, but I, I'm a pretty techie person and I think I'm kind of smart. I just say, poo, it went, kind of went over my head with the NFT stuff, but I know that Elizabeth has some familiarity with NFTs. So what would be a cool topic you guys would like to discuss around that? Well, I don't actually own any myself. My son has been doing it a lot, but we um, had a presentation on NFTs that was really enlightening by experts in the field and also on the metaverse. And I noticed here, so when I looked at your Facebook page, it looks like the banner that you have on your page is from the metaverse. Is that right? Uh, no, actually, I, cre <laughs> I created that created banner. That? So on my banner, the, the two cats that are there are um, NFTs that I incorporated into the into the banner itself. That It is so cool. So really, I would encourage people to go. What was the name of it again? The Facebook page? The Facebook Coffee group? Cat Chat. Yeah, to go look at that because it's really neat. So NFTs are non-fungible tokens, right? And basically, people are using them like trading cards. <laughs> I think it boils down to, right? Um, they started out definitely as trading cards and a way to do digital art. Um, but just keep an eye on this whole space in the next couple of years, because I think it's really going to take off. I think Web3 is where we're all going, both for business and social media, um, as well as art. And NFTs are kind of the gateway, the introduction into that whole space. So right. as far as your art goes, um, what made you think like, hey, I want to do NFTs with this aside from doing like Etsy or creating digital stuff? Because I know you create stuff on eBay and you have journals and you do lots of lots of cool creative stuff. What led you to well, NFTs? When, 
when I started art, actually, I, I started in the physical arts, um, which I still love dearly, but because I moved from um, an engineering uh, career um, into entrepreneurship and uh, eventually found my way into being an artist. And I loved making things with my hands. Um, and so it was only recently in the last little over a year now that I've gone into digital art, um, which I just, I'm just even more blown away by that than I was initially with the physical art. And um, that's when I started, I, I started dabbling a little bit with crypto here and there, you okay. know, five bucks of Bitcoin here or a couple of hundred over there. And there's all kinds of adventures going on with that. But from there, I ran into this thing called NFTs and I went, oh, look. And a lot of the art, I'm like, oh, I don't consider that very much art. But to be honest, art is in the eyes of the beholder. Yes. And they were also using them for trading tokens, which I think is um, significant. So whether or not you think it's great art is actually irrelevant. <laughs> Mm -hmm. The value is in the eyes of the person who's going to buy it. Um, <laughs> so, and that's true. Um, I'm actually pulling up now. Um, I had it up before, but then I got sidetracked by cat videos, of course, <laughs> um, is the one that I got from you. I was actually attracted to the quote first, um, and then I love the colors of it. So the one that I purchased, and I feel pretty cool to have, is I know what I want and get it. And if I don't know what I want, I will very soon. And I was like, that's totally me. Like if I can't make up my mind, I'll eventually will. Um, you could see it's really cool on there. And oh, yeah. really what I wanted to ask you too was why cats? Like, how did you just say like, I'm just going to be a <laughs> coffee cat chat girl. <laughs> I just, I've always loved cats. So we've, I've had dogs and cats while growing up, but after I got divorced, I really got into cats and and my first cat was um a kitten I picked up believe it or not on Halloween a little black kitten Aww. and I've always let my animals name themselves sort of so this name popped into my head Geronimo and so he became Geronimo um he was not a fierce cat he did grow up to be a 15 18 and then 21 pound cat um, but he was just laid back and wonderful. I have pictures of him sitting on my sofa. He was actually sitting with his seat with his paws like this. And he's just, he's just chilling, you know? So, it, cool. and it was during a hectic time in my life. I was going through a messy divorce and, and lots of things that went along with that. So I had this beautiful calming cat. Um, and then um, he helped me pick out my second husband. <laughs> so I'm sensing a theme because you're not the first guest who said that their cat approved of their significant other. Okay. Yes. How, how did he do that? So, so Greg and I went out for dinner and then we came back to my place to watch a little TV. And I went into the kitchen to, to bring, you know, bring some, something to drink. And I come out of the kitchen and there's my cat sitting on Greg's lap and he's purring and he's kneading his paws. And I'm like, this is insane because that cat was my cat. So when my kids, we, I'd split custody with, with my ex. When my kids came over, seriously, he sort of like dutifully came out and greeted them and he let, let them pet him and all that kind of thing and all that kind of, you know, purring and everything else. And then psh, he was just gone. I mean, he was in the house, but he was doing his own until thing. They went home. He was just gone. And, and whenever I had anybody else come over, he never came out even to look. So I was totally shocked when I walk out of the kitchen and there's my cat. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've shared this before about how the first cat that we took in, um, was my cat. And she totally played me. Cause as soon as she met my husband, it's totally his cat. I actually have to correct myself and I should allow my husband to chime in whenever he's listening to us recording these. Cause last episode, probably the last two episodes, I said, yeah, last year when we lost our beautiful Callie last year. And he's like, it's been over two years. You keep saying last Aww. year. So, but to me, it feels like it was still so, you know, a short time ago because, yeah. you know, they're, they're special. They mean a lot to you. It's yeah. really hard to lose a cat. Yeah, I agree. So on the NFTs, it's really interesting. I think that you're right, Tirza, from the conferences I've gone to or people I've talked to about it. I, I think that everybody is kind of saying, look, as soon as the back end gets a lot easier and becomes unnoticeable to people, because right now you have to jump through all these hoops and do all these things. But as soon as they put all that in the back end and, and make it really easy for the consumer, these things are going to take off. Yes. And 
and people buy them. And, you know, I think that there could be more than one of a certain kind of NFT. And they, they said also they're building a community. So like you could have the black cat NFT and you could have the calico cat NFT. And from what I, I understand from the people I've been talking to is maybe we have a cat con type of event and you have to have an NFT to get in. So you come in and, and maybe you're in the black cat group. So you go play board games with the black cat people. Maybe you're in the calico cat group. So you go- Or the stray cats. Or the stray cat group. So maybe you go have tea with the calico cats. Maybe with the stray cats, you talk about how to improve living conditions for cats on the street. <laughs> I mean, right, just, right. Um, you could all, because I like to play with words too. It could become a whole concatenation for your conference. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> right. right. So, so, but the problem with NFTs, I guess it's like having a physical ticket used to be if you lose your wallet, which I guess somebody had their wallet stolen. If you lose your wallet or you forget your password or whatever, you can't get into the event. <laughs> right. That's true. Right. So there are still some things to iron out, but I, I think that they probably will catch on because it's, I mean, how fun is it instead of like just subscribing to Jersey Podcasts. Maybe you sign up for Jersey Podcasts and you get this little digital picture of a really cute cat or something, right? Yes. yes. Right. That and sounds then, fun. Yeah. And then you get other benefits with it. So um, yeah, but it's going to be probably a couple of years before Danielle and I would look at that. Have or time to do it. that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, we want to make sure enough people are ready to use it. Right. right. So um, yeah, the other thing you should think about, just consider for the future, you could mint some of your podcast recordings as NFTs. I had heard that, like I had heard that somebody had partnered with a foot with the NFL or somebody, or maybe it was basketball. I think it was basketball to mint short videos of key players, like and and key plays, yes, and, and sell those and. When they say mint, they mean like that's the first one. So they introduce it. So when they mint it, is that right? Or is it? No, mint actually means you're taking the digital asset, whatever it is, and you are putting it on the blockchain. So that's the process of minting. Um, okay. In that process, you'll decide whether it's going to be a one only uh, okay. of it, or it will be a limited edition of, you know, whatever it is, 100 copies. 10 copies, whatever it is you decide. And also which blockchain you're putting it on. So whether it's going to be Ethereum or Polygon or even uh, USDC, um, you make all those decisions right there up front and that gets it becomes part of the code behind the digital asset that you're putting onto your, um, that you're minting. It right. sounds, I'm, I'm it mad official. at you guys because now I'm going to start digging into this stuff because well, it, it sounds, sounds so cool. It sounds really complicated now, and it is still complicated. It now. is still complicated. Mm -hmm. But two years from now, it's it's going to be like I don't know, downloading an app on your phone. Like remember when you first had to get into apps and figure out how to use them, and now everything's an app and everybody uses apps all the time. I think it's going to go like that. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Yes. So so anybody can make their own NFT, right? Yes, yes they can. And there are platforms right now. I think OpenSea.io is like the largest marketplace. Um, yep. There's platforms where you can sell them when you where you can buy them. So there's all. What kinds I want to see. Go ahead. Yeah, what I want to see is um, you know, a cat figuring out how to do it. Or imagine all the pictures, <laughs> all the pictures people have of their cats, being able to monetize those. Or I'm thinking like rescues can create like collections of like the adoptable cats and use that to raise money. Like that's why I said I'm mad at you guys. Cause now my brain's like, Ooh, what cool things can you do with of this? Of course. Stuff? Of course yeah. you're going to go there. You're going to think <laughs> of all the possibilities. My brain it. never shuts off. So well, how many I mean, cat NFTs yeah. do you have Tirza? Um, Probably close to 300 at this point. That you've made with digital art. Um, So my first, actually my first NFT collection which is over on OpenSea, I asked people to send me pictures of their sleeping cats, <laughs> okay. which it kind of blew me away how eager they were to do that. And then I said up front, I, and then I sent them another message afterwards. I want to take a pic, your, the picture you sent me. I'm going to apply some digital effects to it. And then I want to mint it as an NFT and see if I can sell it. And I'm happy to share the proceeds with you. Do you agree to that? And most people said, I don't care about that. I just 
happy that you like the, the pictures of my cats. And some people, people want to yes, share their cats. Yeah. So my mm -hmm. first collection is on OpenSea. It's about, I think it's called Let Sleeping Cats Lie. And I positioned it sort of as a cure for insomnia <laughs> because you're looking at cats sleeping. Um, and the, to be honest, it was my very first foray into the NFT space. I didn't really know what I was doing. And so they're really overpriced, <laughs> but I wanted to see what would happen. So because people were selling NFTs of other things for way more than what I was asking. Um, I didn't sell any cat NFTs. I sold some other digital art um, at that point. But later on, when I got into more of this, um, more digital art of starting with just cats without pictures, um, that's when I came into the coffee cats. That's so, so cool. <laughs> and I love digital art too. I actually have some digital cat art, which you can't see that great behind me. I'll get my update uh, or my setup updated a bit for you know next episode or two. But on YouTube, you can see it too, because I love it because you can do any different sizes. Not that I don't love regular art, which I also have on my wall behind me too, but like I can't do anything with that. Like I can, it's on display and I love it. The one I'm pointing to here. Um, right. but you know, if I want a sticker for my laptop, so I love stickers in case I haven't mentioned that yet. <laughs> um, or if I want to get a shirt made or a cut made, like I just love digital art and I'm, I love art in general too. It's so cool. Yes. And well, you have I really great art behind you too, Elizabeth, that I think is just fabulous. Oh, though. <laughs> yes. I talk about this almost every time. So my kids for my birthday, I, at that point I had checkers and Mercutio and they bought they went online and found a place where you can put different costumes on your cats and then make these little canvas prints. <laughs> I really, they really captured the cat's personalities. And then they added Lily for my last birthday. So if you, if you want to see what they look like, you can go on YouTube, but I have spoken about checkers in the past. She's in the general's uniform. Checkers ran the household with an iron fist when she was alive. <laughs> She passed away last April. I still miss her a lot. So that's why she's up there. But, um, you know, another thing, Tirza, I, I'm looking at your digital cat art. Do, do you, are you familiar with Laurel Birch? No. Mm -mm. Okay. That might've been somewhat before your time. Laurel Birch used to do before digital art, she used to do these really fanciful cat jewelry pieces and totes and blankets and different things. And it was kind of fanciful it yours isn't exactly like it but it's kind of got the same feel to me of like a lot of colors and really kind of cool pretty stuff that you I'm looking want. it up right now oh. I'll have to go look her up yeah for sure yeah she I think she's since passed away but she she was a very creative artist who did a lot with cats she, I think she did some with horses and stuff too um but you, your art is a little bit like hers was in the fact, just in the way that you use colors in a really creative way. Like she was so creative. I love the creativity in your work. Thank it, you. It's yeah. really, I mean. And it's nice it's, to go online too. And, and I, people think I'm on social all the time. I'm really not because there's just so much going on there, but it's <laughs> nice that when I'm looking at that stuff, like I get to see happy little cats and quotes and all that popping up online. So I love what you're doing. So is there anything else that you'd like to share, um, you know, with our listeners at all here? Enjoy your cats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, enjoy them while you have them. That's a good message. <laughs> Most definitely. And then, and then, you know, people love posting about their dogs. And I know there's a lot of dog out, art out there. Um, but I just wanted to add some cat art to the world. And um, I, I noticed, especially during our, our uh, lockdown time, there was a lot of us <clears throat> spending time watching um, cute little cat videos because sometimes <laughs> I just needed cheering up. So, mm -hmm. you know, enjoy them. Love yeah. it. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for being here. Um, yeah. If you think of any other topics you'd like to have us cover, let us know. We'd love to have you come back. Um, and if anybody wants to get in touch with you, what's the best way they can do that? Um, actually, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram. <laughs> there you go. Keep it By super simple. For my name, it's the easiest way. Yeah. So, so your name is spelled T E R Z A. Yes. E K E K H O L M. And I would really encourage anybody listening to this to go on Facebook and look at her cat pictures. They are so creative and so cool. And I mean, there's one I really love. It says, "Words are curious things." That that is amazing. And then you've got another one of a cat with a cup of coffee and he's like dressed. <laughs> I mean, it's just it's fun, right? It's just fun. 
Thank you. Thank you so much for having me on. Thank you guys. Uh, Thanks everyone for listening. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe, follow, rate, all that jazz. Check us out at thejerseypodcasts.com. Follow us on Facebook. We also have a Facebook group, Instagram, and anywhere you listen to your favorite podcasts. Take care, everyone. Thank you.